Good morning, St Luke's. Uh, we're looking at John chapter 11, verses 1 to 10 this morning. And if you read through those verses, then it seems as though we've got an entirely new angle being taken uh, by John at this point in his Gospel. Uh, there are three characters who are introduced about whom we've heard nothing before, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. At the same time, uh, Mary is described as the one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So John seems to sort of presume uh, that his readers are familiar with these characters already. The incident of anointing uh, will be described later in uh, John chapter 12. Now the high point of chapter 11 uh, is obviously the raising of Lazarus from the dead. However, let's set the scene from these opening verses uh, with two uh, early observations. First, we see that we have trusting sheep. Chapter 10 has concluded with many people coming to Jesus and believing in him. Now, these are representatives of sheep who know the voice of their good shepherd <coughs> and who find his call irresistible. Mary, Martha and indeed Lazarus are examples of such trusting sheep for us. John reminds us of the devotion that will be shown by Mary. But what we are told first is that this is a family in need. Lazarus, the brother, lies sick. The reaction uh, that the family have is to immediately let Jesus know. The sisters send a message. Lord, the one you love is sick. The sheep in need know the intimacy of their shepherd. They can assert confidently that Jesus loves Lazarus. Interestingly, there's no request that accompanies this message, just information. However, I don't think we are stretching things to assume that the family uh, expected some sort of response from Jesus. They are the trusting sheep of Jesus's flock. They are abiding in the protection of being part of God's pen. Then we have two acts from Jesus that cause us confusion. In verse 6, we read that when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Nobody questions this in John's account, uh, but we the readers certainly ask, well, why does he not rush to help? Isn't this Jesus, the good shepherd who protects, loves and cares for his sheep? In the next verse, Jesus says, let us go back to Judea. And the disciples are confused, verbally this time. Didn't the Jews just try to stone you? Why do you want to go back there? They are confused by seemingly walking into danger. However, when we trust in Jesus, the way we look at things should be changed. There is a process of transforming perspective going on here. So that's trusting sheep and transforming perspective. From the ground level, two things uh, make sense, or two things would make sense. Either Jesus would rush to Bethany to help, or he stays put and never goes in order to preserve his own safety. But Jesus does nothing. He delays and then he goes. In the explanation, uh, there are parallels uh, to the incident when the man is born blind, back in John chapter 9. For him, the purpose was that the work of God might be displayed. And here, the sickness is described as for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. And verses 9 and 10 in this incident, well, they echo Jesus' words in chapter 9, verses 4 and 5, about the importance of acting in the light rather than at night time in the dark. This is about seeing things under God's illumination, not through the confusion of the world. We must wait for the whole purpose uh, of this incident with Lazarus to be revealed. For the moment and for today, for today the sickness of Lazarus is symbolic for us of all the extremities and difficulties that we come across. It might be the death of a loved one. It could be the sickness or illness of somebody close to us, particularly if it's unexpected. It could be the loss of position or security. It could be anxiety that we hold over our children. The list really could be endless, couldn't it? The initial response for all of us, I think, to such things is always confusion, anxiety and pain. Trusting sheep learn to see things differently, to inform their shepherd in prayer.
and then to wait patiently. This isn't some sort of British stiff upper lipness, but rather it is the demonstration of deep spiritual dependency. And so today, may we learn to have our perspectives transformed as we trust in Jesus, who is our shepherd and we are his sheep. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, whatever is going on in our lives today, for those things that cause us confusion, pain or anxiety, help us to trust them to Jesus, who is our good shepherd and who leads us uh, to good pasture. Amen.